Hey guys, I'm Callum. Before I dive into this wild ride of a story, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button, all right? Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this. So, I'm 25 years old, and I'm still living at home with my parents, Margaret and Richard. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Callum, get your act together, man. But here's the thing. I've been trying, I swear. Every morning, I wake up feeling like I've been hit by a truck. My brain's all foggy, and I can barely drag myself out of bed. Mom's always there, hovering. Uh, hey, Callum, honey, did you sleep okay? You look tired. Maybe you should stay home today. And most days I do. I've lost count of how many jobs I've started and then quit or been fired from because I just couldn't keep up. It's embarrassing, you know? My best friend Zoe, she's always checking up on me. We were hanging out in my room the other day, and she hit me with the hard truth. Cal, this isn't normal. You're smart, funny. You should be out there living your life, not cooped up in here. I sighed, running a hand through my hair. You think I don't know that? I want to. Z, I just... I can't seem to get my shit together. My sister, Emma. She's got it all figured out. Living on her own, killer job, the works. She barely visits anymore, and when she does, it's like she can't wait to leave. Last time she was over, she pulled me aside. Callum, you've got to get out of here. Mom and Dad, they're, they're not helping you. I brushed her off, but deep down I knew she was right. I was frustrated, angry even. I wanted more, but it felt like I was stuck in quicksand. Then came the family dinner that changed everything. Mom had made my favorite lasagna, but I could barely stomach it. The tension at the table was thick enough to cut with a knife. Dad cleared his throat. So, son, any plans for the week? I took a deep breath. This was it. Actually, yeah. I've been thinking. Maybe it's time I looked for my own place. The silence that followed was deafening. Mom's fork clattered to her plate. But, sweetie, she said, her voice trembling, you're not ready. You can barely take care of yourself here. How would you manage on your own? I felt a spark of anger. I'm 25, Mom. I should be able to take care of myself by now. Dad's face hardened. Now, Callum, your mother's right. You're not well. You need us. I'm not well because you won't let me be well, I snapped, surprising even myself. I feel like a prisoner in my own life. Mom burst into tears, and Dad's face turned red with anger. Go to your room, he growled. We'll discuss this when you're thinking clearly. As I stormed upstairs, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was very, very wrong. Little did I know I was about to uncover a truth that would turn my whole world upside down. I woke up feeling like crap, as usual. My head was pounding, and my body felt like it weighed a ton. I dragged myself downstairs, where Mom was already fussing over breakfast. Good morning, sweetie. I made your favorite pancakes. I mumbled a thanks and sat down, staring at the stack of fluffy pancakes. Suddenly, a thought hit me. Why did I always feel worse after eating at home? Actually, Mom, I'm not that hungry. I think I'll just have some coffee, she frowned. But Callum, you need your strength. Are you feeling okay? I shrugged her off and left for work. By lunchtime, I realized something weird. I felt better, more alert, less foggy. This couldn't be a coincidence. Over the next week, I started secretly skipping more meals at home. The difference was night and day. I called Zoe, needing to talk to someone. Zoe, I think something's up with the food at my house. I've been feeling better when I don't eat at home. That's weird, Cal. Have you looked into food allergies or something? We spent hours researching online. The more we read, the more a terrifying possibility emerged. Long-term poisoning. This is crazy, I said, my voice shaking. My own parents wouldn't, would they? Zoe's voice was grim. There's only one way to find out, Cal. The next day, I set up a hidden camera in the kitchen while my parents were out. My heart was pounding so hard, I thought it might burst out of my chest. That evening, I watched the footage, feeling sick to my stomach. There it was, clear as day. Mom adding some white powder to my food. Just mine. I burst into the living room, my whole body shaking. What the hell have you been putting in my food? Mom's face went white. Dad stood up, looking angry. Callum, what are you talking about? Don't lie to me! I screamed, showing them the video on my phone. I saw you, Mom. What is that stuff?
Mom started crying. Dad's face hardened. It's for your own good, son. You're not ready for the world out there. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. But my own good? You've been drugging me, keeping me sick and dependent. We're protecting you, Mom wailed. You don't understand how cruel the world can be. I felt like I was going to be sick. You're the cruel ones. You're monsters. Dad took a step towards me, his voice low and threatening. Now listen here, Callum. We're your parents. We know what's best for you. I backed away, my mind reeling. Stay away from me all this time. All those doctors. It was you. You've ruined my life. I ran out of the house, ignoring their shouts. I didn't know where I was going, but I knew I couldn't stay there another second. My whole life had been a lie, and I was finally seeing the truth. As I ran down the street, tears streaming down my face, I pulled out my phone and dialed Zoe's number with shaking fingers. Zoe, I choked out when she answered, you were right, it's worse than we thought. I need help. After fleeing my parents' house, I found myself on Zoe's doorstep, still shaking from what I'd discovered. She took one look at my face and pulled me inside. Callum, what happened? You look like you've seen a ghost. I collapsed on her couch, my head in my hands. It's worse than that, Z. My parents says, they've been drugging me for years. Zoe's jaw dropped. What, are you sure? I nodded, recounting everything I'd seen on the hidden camera. Zoe listened, her eyes growing wider with each detail. We need to call Emma, she said finally. She needs to know about this. I hesitated. Emma and I hadn't been close lately, but Zoe was right. I dialed her number, my heart pounding. Callum, it's 2 a.m., what's going on? I took a deep breath. Em, I need your help. It's about mom and dad. They've been, they've been drugging me. There was a long pause. That's a serious accusation, Cal. Are you sure? I have proof. Please, Emma, I wouldn't make this up. She sighed. Okay, I'll be there in the morning. We'll figure this out. True to her word, Emma arrived early the next day. We spent hours going over everything. The hidden camera footage, my improved health since leaving home, the years of unexplained symptoms. This is insane, Emma muttered. But we need more than just your word and some grainy video. We need real evidence. That's when Zoe spoke up. I know a guy, a private investigator. He could help us gather proof. The PI, a gruff man named Frank, didn't bat an eye at our story. Seen weirder, he grunted. I'll get you what you need. While Frank worked his magic, I underwent a battery of medical tests. The results were shocking. Years of low-level toxin exposure had taken a toll on my body. This explains so much, I said, staring at the results. The fatigue, the brain fog, it was all them. Emma squeezed my hand. We'll make this right, Cal, I promise. A week later, Frank called us in. You're not going to believe this, he said, sliding a folder across the table. Your parents are part of an online group. They call themselves Guardians of Dependent Adult Children. It's, it's a whole network of parents who do this to their kids. I felt sick. How many? Frank shook his head. Dozens at least, maybe more. Armed with this information, Emma and I decided it was time to confront our parents. We drove to the house, my stomach in knots. Mom opened the door, her face lighting up. Callum, you're home. We've been so worried. Save it, Mom. I cut her off pushing past her into the living room. Dad looked up from his newspaper, his face darkening. What's the meaning of this? Emma stepped forward. We know what you've been doing to Callum. We have proof. Mom's face went pale. We don't know what you're talking about. I slammed the medical reports on the coffee table. Stop lying. You've been poisoning me for years. Why? Why would you do this to your own son? Dad stood up his voice cold. We did what we had to do to protect you. You're not capable of surviving on your own. Because of what you did to me, I shouted. We're your parents, Mom pleaded. We know what's best for you. Emma scoffed. You're delusional, both of you. Dad's face hardened. Callum, if you walk out that door, you're cut off. No more money, no more support. You'll have nothing. I looked at him really looked at him for the first time in years. No, Dad, if I stay, I'll have nothing. My life, my freedom, that's everything. And I'm taking it back. As Emma and I walked out, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. 
The road ahead would be tough, but for the first time in years, I was free. And I was never looking back. The first few weeks after leaving my parents' house were rough. Zoe and Emma helped me move into a tiny studio apartment, but the real challenge was just beginning. You're going to get through this, Cal, Zoe said, squeezing my hand as another wave of nausea hit me. Detoxing was hell. My body, so used to the drugs my parents had been feeding me, rebelled. There were days I could barely get out of bed, my muscles aching and my head pounding. But I was free, and that made all the difference. Just when I thought things were looking up, Emma called, Cal, you need to see this. My parents had gone on the offensive, posting on social media about their mentally unstable son who had run away from home. They painted themselves as worried sick parents, desperate for their child to return to safety. This is bullshit, I growled, scrolling through the sympathetic comments. Emma's voice was steel. Then, let's tell the truth. We gathered every piece of evidence we had. Medical reports, the PI's findings, everything. Then we went public. The fallout was immediate and intense. Family friends who had known me my whole life were shocked. Some didn't believe it at first, but the evidence was overwhelming. I always thought something was off with them, my aunt whispered at a family gathering. I'm so sorry, Callum. We should have seen it. As our story spread, others came forward. The online group my parents were part of was exposed, leading to a full-scale investigation. I watched on TV as the news broke. A nationwide ring of parents deliberately keeping their adult children dependent through long-term poisoning has been uncovered. My parents' faces flashed on the screen, along with others. I felt a mix of vindication and sadness. The consequences for my parents were swift. Dad lost his job at the law firm. Mom's friends stopped talking to her. They became pariahs in the community they'd once ruled. Months passed. I got stronger, both physically and mentally. I found a job I loved, made new friends, started living the life I'd been denied for so long. One day I got a letter from my parents. They wanted to meet, to apologize, to make amends. I stared at the letter for a long time before tossing it in the trash. You're not going to respond, Zoe asked. I shook my head. They had their chance. I'm done with them. Instead... I channeled my energy into starting a support group for other victims of family abuse. Our first meeting, I looked around the room at faces filled with pain, but also hope. I know it feels impossible right now, I said, but trust me, there's life after this. There's freedom, and we're going to find it together. As I drove home that night, I felt at peace for the first time in years. My parents had tried to clip my wings, but instead, they taught me how to soar, and now I was flying higher than ever before. That's the end of Callum's intense journey. Now I've got a tough question for you. If you were in Callum's shoes, would you have confronted your parents immediately after discovering their betrayal, or gathered more evidence first like he did? This is a heavy moral dilemma. Speaking up right away could have stopped the abuse sooner, but without solid proof, it might have been Callum's word against his manipulative parents. On the flip side, Taking time to build a case allowed for more concrete evidence, but meant enduring more abuse. What would you have done? Would you have risked not being believed or played the long game to ensure justice? Share your thoughts in the comments. Your perspective could help others facing similar tough situations. If this story got you thinking, hit that like button and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Your support helps us keep sharing these complex, real-life inspired stories.